Hello, welcome to part 7 of the organic chemistry tutorial series. Um, today we'll go over Markovnikov rules. So what is Markovnikov? Markovnikov, or Markovnikov, um, the rule is talking about regioselectivity. So regioselective is Regio selectivity means just um, where it wants to go, like when you're adding a region. So where is like the question that it asks. So um, before we do that, um, uh, two reactions that I want to go over um, is sin and anti, and that is um, stereo specific. Or selective, I guess. Stereo selective. This is just meaning front, same, or different. And what it means is that, so when we learned about palladium, or um, alkenes, and then applying um, hydrogen uh, catalyst with palladium, we know that it goes all the way, right? But one thing that I, um, I specifically didn't mention is that this is a syn addition of hydrogens on both sides attaching on the same side. So how does that happen is we have the alkene, right? And what we do is there is a plate of either nickel or palladium or platinum, but mostly nickel because it's cheap. But... Um, Hydrogens are just attached on it, and so we run the um, alkene or alkyne, um, and the hydrogen is just attached on the same side, hence why we call it a syn addition. However, bromine, bromination of an alkene um, with Br2, actually it does an anti-addition where, so what happens is Br, uh, the first bromine actually um, so what happens right here is Br, there's two of them, and so the bond attacks the bromine, like so, and it's lost its electrons. What bromine has a tendency to do is to form actually a sort of a three-membered ring called a bromonium ion. After that, the Br- minus that's left behind does a, um, an SN2-like reaction, hence why we get an anti-addition to where either bromines are anti to each other. Both bromines are anti to each other. So this is an anti-addition. So this is stereospecific, um, and then uh, regioselective is when Markovnikov rule uh, comes into play. So um, back to Markovnikov rule, Mark's rule. Um, states that when we add a HBr, <clears throat> hydrogen goes to goes to um, the place with more hydrogens. What I mean by that is when we have an alkene, so this is going to be our first. Um, Um, alkene uh, reaction and um, this uh, video will go over all of the alkene reactions and also alcohol reactions um, as well as radicals so what happens is um, hydrogen is actually pulled off by the pi bond breaking it right and so then Hydrogen is here, and then bromine actually goes to the least substituted. And so when we're talking about uh, um, Mar Markovnikov's rule, there's more hydrogens on this area, so hydrogen goes over here. So that's Markovnikov's rule. Hydrogen wants to go with um, where it has more of its friends, essentially. And so this um, 
well, this reaction actually produces racemic mixture. And so um, it could be like this and this, or vice versa. So uh, keep in mind of that. And then <clears throat> now another, um, so let's see right here. So um, we went over BR2, how it creates a bromonium ion, but when it, we have water present, what happens is, so first BR forms the bromonium ion plus charge, and then water, since it actually can, since BR minus has a negative charge, um, water can just like sort of surround it, uh, kind of like how um, when you put uh, NaCl into water, uh, sodium chloride, it forms um, a, a sort of a capsule, um, per se. So then water actually is all around you, so it can actually attack the most substituted, right? And the reason why it can do most substituted is similar to an SN1, where this carbon, this tertiary carbon, has the potential to have a more uh, has a pot potential to have a carbocation, a tertiary carbocation, hence why there's a greater delta plus charge um, here than um, uh, over here on this other carbon. This is why the water can attack the most, or tends to attack the most substituted. Now, um, scientists, while accidentally washing with per, uh, peroxide with their glassware tried to do Markovnikov's rule. And what they found was that it kept not adding to where it was supposed to. And so um, after investigating, they figured out that, found out that peroxide um, made it do the opposite. So hydrogen actually attaches here and bromine would go to the least substituted um, area. Um, this only occurs with uh, hydrogen bor uh, bromine, um, HBr, and not with any um, um, other halogen acids. <clears throat> so keep that in mind. And then the next reaction we'll go over is using, uh, or the addition of, I sh should say, the alcohol. So um, H3O plus or, um, well, H2O actually, and H3O plus or H3PO4, um, what happens is, <clears throat> so water actually kind of, I think of it as just, uh, water and, uh, separating one hydrogen with the OH, and so it kind of does what um, HBr does, and it is also Markovnikov's rule, where the um, pi bond grabs the H, and the OH um, proceeds to uh, attach to the most substituted uh, carbon. So then it'll be an OH right here. So that's a Markovnikov's, that also follows Markovnikov's rule. Now, um, IBr, this one is actually pretty interesting because um, actually uh, due to the weak electronegativity of iodine, this has more of a delta plus while Br bromine has a delta negative. And so essentially what it does is the same thing with um, uh, HBr where it first grabs the iodine and then later the BR attacks um, the most substituted to produce a um, this molecule right here. Okay, so one thing to note about um, the previous reaction right here is that this actually happens really slowly. So, or in multiple steps. So this is called an acid catalyzed hydration and essentially what this is doing is, um, this is like a quick overview, but actually what happens is um, there can be carbocation rearrangement where 
acid catalyzed is doing a um, H2O and H3O plus. And so what it does is H3O plus actually it gives it a hydrogen to the most substituted. And this plus charge is a carbocation formation. And then afterwards, H2O is added and then deprotonated pretty easily because it has a plus charge. Um, so to form the OH. <clears throat> so um, remember when you're having this reaction, please look at if there is any possibility to do carbocation rearrangement. Okay, so, so the next reaction to go over is um, a carbonoid formation, a carbene formation. So CH2I2 and zinc copper. So let me just try to do that. And so what happens here is from this double bond and the reaction between uh, the reagents themselves create this sort of uh, hydrogen and iodine. This weird looking structure and so the pi bond actually attacks the uh, carbon and this uh, structure is called a carbonoid and so it's actually a carbene formation like this this is a carbene and so the pi bond forms or grabs this and the electrons right here grab onto here uh, onto this other side and then kicks off the iodine forming forming this uh, cyclopropane All right so osmium um, reaction this is actually there's um, two types of this similar reaction so one is using osmium so um, O4 with pyridine and second step is NaHSO3 H2O. So what happens here is um, osmium um, sort of makes a carbonoid as well. It attaches two oxygens and then um, on the second step NaHSO3 H2O or H2O, it uses, it um, attaches hydrogens, protonates it, essentially, and so we are forming a syn addition of um, diols. So syn addition of diols and enantiomers. Enantiomers. Okay, so one similar um, reaction is using Kamino 4 um, cold. A, or potassium permang permanganate cold any cold temperature oops and h2o oh minus and very similar um, um, reaction to where so oh and oh so it also creates a um, syn dial <laughs> Um, on the other hand, potassium permanganate, permanganate can do another reaction when it ha is in um, hot temperature. So heat, heat, and OH, and H2O. So what happens is this actually cleaves it and adds oxygens on the double bond. So what we get is oxygen like this plus this but in addition to that camino 4 further oxidizes to where it places a oxygen in between the hydrogen creating carboxylic acid so any aldehydes are further oxidized into carboxylic acids and a good way to remember about how camino 4 works is um, cold beer hot cleavage so cold beer basically is you know cold beer 
basically saying that we're putting two alcohols and hot cleavage is we're cleaving the alkene. The hot cleavage. So basically, we're just cutting the um, two, the double bond in half and adding two oxygens. And so the same reaction or a very similar reaction is done with ozone and uh, dimethyl sulfate. Sulfur. And so what this does is it also does the same thing, cleaves it, adds oxygens. However, um, it just leaves as is. So those are all the reactions for alkenes. But so then let's move on to the alcohol um, synthesis for alkenes, which is first one is oxymercuration, or actually we did we just went over one, which was acid catalyzed hydration, um, and it does Markovnikov with rearrangement, um, and so the second one we'll do is. Um, Oxymercuration, demercuration. Okay, so step one is that. Step two is NaBH4Cl. All right. So what happens here is it actually adds alcohols and alcohol um, to the most substituted without rearrangement, and it's Markovnikov. This is oxymercuration, demercuration, and basically what happens is, um, during this uh, step, it um, forms a, forms a sort of bromonium ion-like thing, where it's mercury um, with acetate and plus charge, Right here. So what happens is then second step is uh, the um, H2O actually attacking here, right? So making an alcohol, it's easily depronated by the way. And there is mercury acetate still there. And so the second step that it does with the NaBH4Cl it replaces that mercury with um, a hydrogen and it's forming our product now the second or I guess third one I should say is hydroboration oxidation and this one is a little bit special because it does anti Markovnikov so um, hopefully this is this will stick uh, in your mind pretty easily H2O2OH minus and it does anti-Markovnikov addition of alcohol um, and uh, does syn addition of alcohol so syn addition with hydrogen the actual reaction itself is um, so since boron is more is less electronegative it actually acts as the hydrogen instead of um, bromine, or uh, instead of hydrogen itself, actually. And so HBH2 and the pi bond actually attaches to the bor boron, and then afterwards the hydrogen attacks the more substituted. And this can happen multiple times. Um, boron can actually do it three more, uh, two more times, creating this weird looking structure. Like that. And like so. And then, um, uh, second step where uh, peroxide um, and uh, OH minus actually form an O 
OH minus. And so this can actually attack with its um, electrons, <clears throat> the boron, and then it creates a delta positive on the boron, delta negatives all over the um, the molecules, um, the R chains. And so one of them can actually do an intramolecular rearrangement and kick off this OH. Now what happens is then the structure actually looks like um, bromine, R group, R group, and then oxygen, like this. And then the OH minus that was kicked off reattacks and uh, kicks off this uh, structure over here. So this becomes an alkoxide, basically, and it's got a negative charge. Since it's in water, it's easily just protonated back. So that is why it is anti-Marconikov. But the easier way to think about it is since there's peroxide right here, then you can think, oh, um, I've, you can think back to the HBr with peroxide and think, okay, th so this is also an anti Um, but it's in addition without rearrangement. Now the order of reactivity of alcohols <clears throat> regarding um, like dehydration or uh, yes, dehydration is so um, remember when we did the um, alcohol dehydration where we use H3O plus and H2O, HI actually. And so generally speaking, um, when we're doing this, it's very similar to acid catalyzed hydration. So what we're all we're doing is putting a better leaving group on here. And so what happens is this H3O plus, you know, protonates the H2O and creating oxonium ion that leaves, right? It's very similar to acid catalyzed hydration. But um, the reactivity on this is, is also like tertiary, secondary, and primary. Um, so tertiary is relatively easier to like um, pull out. Um, and so we get a carbocation, remember? And then the HCl, the Cl, can actually go and attack this part. So Cl can actually go and attack this part. Um, the way I think about it, or HI, the way I think about it is like more of, um, <clears throat> um, the hydrogen just de -pro or actually protonating it so that it can be easier for you to think like, uh, similarly to HBr, uh, how we did that with the Markonikov rule. So then we get, uh, an iodide on the tertiary carbon, making a better leaving group so that you can do more. Um, reactions uh, with ease. All right, so if you haven't noticed, um, now we're just moving on to like alcohol reactions. And so one of the alcohol reactions is using um, uh, uh, sodium, elemental sodium <clears throat> with heat. With heat. And so let me just rewrite this so it's heat and so what happens is it donates one of its electrons and this does a homolysis leaving um or hydrogen leaves because it's good with two electrons and forms hydrogen gas with a h plus ion and we are left with a radical um uh, oxygen and so another you know sodium can elemental sodium can just donate it making it RO minus and so we get RO minus plus H2 and so um, by form forming the 
uh, hydrogen um, gas. Uh, according to Lachatelier's principle, since our equilibrium is basically being um, moved towards products, because you have you're losing products basically because of the hydrogen, and so hydrogen gas is just like leaving the um, uh, reaction, and so this um, dri this is the driving force of this reaction so it's product favored and it creates basically a strong nucleophile a strong base strong a strong nucleophile a strong base for further reactions so primary and secondary um, alkyl halides we can do um, something called a Williamson William ether synthesis ether synthesis and what this is, is um, after like a deep, so we have an alcohol, right? And so with some kind of strong base, we can deprotonate it having an R minus. After that, we can actually use this as our strong nucleophile to make an ether. So it does an SN2, right? So SN2 reaction. On a primary. Um, secondary actually can either do uh, E2 or SN2. Um, and so, but remember that just deprotonating and uh, the alcohol creates a good um, um, or a strong base, strong nucleophile so that it can create an a ether. Now with um, tertiary carbons with um, ROH, Let's say we have uh, some kind of structure like this. And so it's OH and we have this two structures, this two methyls. Um, we can use HPR and so we protonate it so that then it leaves, right? H2 plus and it's able to leave. This forms carbocation and can do a carbocation rearrangement. So looking at this, we can do a methyl shift, right? Methyl shift right here. We can just move it over here and then the positive charge moves over. So what happens is we move the methyl and then over here, we get a positive charge. After that, the B minus, Br minus can attack both sides and form a racemic mixture of uh, a tertiary bromine or tertiary alkyl halide and so it could be um, it's actually um, would be diastereomers uh, created because um, the one of this is going to this actually methyl shift is not going to be changing the meth the methyl will not be changing so it'll be like that 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 so diastereomers stereomers <clears throat> now then um finally or lastly we can use um certain reagents to create a better leaving group or adding alkyl halides or making an alkyl halide. So let's say we had an OH right here and this only works for primary and secondary, never tertiary. And so what happens is we can use SOCl2, uh, PCl5, PCl3, um, PBr3, to do to replace this uh, OH group into an RX. Fairly straightforward. So CL, anything ending in CL is just uh, replacing it with the chlorine and then also, I forgot, PI2. So um, anything ending in um, 
bromine is go obviously going to replace the bromine and then um, iodide also same thing so what happens is ROH we have this P um, CL 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 so it tacks here it kicks off a chlorine <clears throat> And then this chlorine actually, and it gains a positive charge here. And so this chlorine actually can gains a negative charge and does an SN2 like reaction, which is why it does an RC, uh, replaces it with the chlorine. Same kind of logic with all of the other reagents as well. If you need more, um, um, like want to know about the mechanism, I have. I suggest that you go over to like the textbook or um, online resources. Um, also, sulfonic sulfonic chlorides. Um, they do the same thing as well. Instead, um, they actually are the um, uh, good leaving group. So, what this means is, if I have an R R O H right here. And then we have an, um, let's say R prime S O C O O. So what happens here is that this attacks, um, and so the uh, siphon little chloride, and we get something like this. R prime. O minus, sorry, that's kind of messy, but so after this is formed, it because pi bonds are the most easier to break, that's why pi bonds break. But if actually it reforms, and CL since it's a good leaving group, it kind of is popped off. So what you get is actually, and you actually have a hydrogen right here, and the hydrogen actually gets deprotonated to where you would have. An S, a sulfon, sulfonate, sulfonate, um, like this, and this entire thing is actually a good leaving group, so you can do a substitution elimination, right after that. So the various types of um, um, sulf, sulfonates, um, I'll list them all. Um, so the first one is. Um, uh, methane sulfonyl chloride or methyl chloride. So, methyl chloride is the name. Methyl chloride. Uh, the other one is uh, trifol chloride. And this is an extremely good leaving group. And a um, tosyl chloride. So all of these have to do with like um, these portions right here. And so this is actually a toluene um, group because it's a benzene with a methyl. And the O is just... Uh, indicative of resonance on the benzene and so these are all great leaving groups because of their um, resonance structures now on to epoxide formations so epoxides are formed with a proxy acid and so proxy acid is just anything that has an OO um, H right here and that's a proxy acid and the common ones we use is MCPBA which is metachloroproxybenzoic acid and then we can also use MMPP and what it does is it forms an epoxide and epoxides are a cyclopropane like structure with an oxygen in the middle and it is a syn addition and stereo retention.
Now with this, let's say we form this epoxide right here. Uh, two things can happen. So one, if using a strong, a uh, strong uh, nucleophile, or using a weak nucleophile. So, two things can happen. So, um, an acronym that we use is BLAM. Base less substituted, um, acid more substituted. So what we're saying is that um, for strong nucleophiles or strong bases, um, actual, uh, the base would actually attack here, the less uh, substituted, and then um, the base or the um, O minus would actually just be protonated. And then for weak nucleophiles or acids, we have to actually protonate this to where um, O is like that, creating a positive charge and a delta positive on either side. And since the tertiary carbon is has a tendency to become a more stable carbocation, that's where the uh, weak nucleophile would actually attach here. So I'll just put acid here, then OH over here. So this is what would happen. So blam base less, so base less uh, acid more. It's an easy way to re remember how reactions will go. Now then, let's move on to radicals. And so radicals actually help us, radical reactions actually help us to do, um, to create good leaving groups onto things that aren't, that have none. So it creates something from nothing, creates something from nothing. That's basically what it does. Um, and so um, previously we've used ionic reactions with heter heterolysis, and now radical reactions use homolysis, um, which is, so in HBr, it was rather, it was just like donating all the electrons to the bromine, but for this one, it would be HBr, and they would each gain electrons. Homo lysis, hetero lysis. Okay, so then let's look at um, like what is each of the steps. So the first step of these reactions, so what happened is the basic overview is you have this R group and you add a halogen with light and you get rx plus hx now how this happens is um, there's three steps so first step is initiation that's when um, let's say where you were using chlorine and so with light it actually does homolysis with light and creates radicals. Right, okay, so um, then we do, um, second step is propagation, where um, some of it, um, let's say this is the R group and H, some of it could go ahead and react here, where this lysis here and form a CLH. So it forms this plus HCl, right? And it forms a radical. So this is like very small percentage. So Second part is 90% of what happens is this radical right here that is formed This actually joins
together like that, doing homolysis. And this forms our wanted product of H, uh, H3CCL plus a radical. Right, and then, so the last step is termination. So termination. That is when um, chlorine can, chlorine radicals, I'll just put single to like just show you, um, shorthanded. And so then it becomes a CL2 again. Um, and then um, two radicals of CH3 actually come together and then they reform uh, H, uh, an ethyl group, ethyl chain, and um, these radicals actually see a, a chlorine radical and a uh, methyl radical actually form the, um, the wanted product. So these guys all are just like two to three percent of the reaction. So most of the time it's just the uh, radical of um, the R group uh, joining with the um, doing homolysis on the um, the halogens. So during propagation. So this would be like ninety percent of what would happen. So basic um, the takeaway key takeaway is that. It creates something from nothing on the most substituted. Um, I miswrote this. And so um, bromine actually is um, more uh, regioselective. So for bromine, um, you could actually have it on the most substituted. So if you were to do BR2 and light, it would just go on the most substituted. But for chlorine, um, it's less uh, selective, and so it can actually, it's more reactive, so chlorine can go anywhere. Chlorine can, let me just use a different color. Ch chlorine can go anywhere. So BR2 and light is a good way to do radical reactions. But in addition, we can use um, N-bromosacinamide, called NBS for short. And so we'll, it, it'll look like this. It's like a pentane, like that. And so we can use this for allylic um, structures, allylic positions like right here, right here, or right here, or not right there. And so what NBS, NBS will do is NBS with light or peroxide, it will actually do, um, it'll actually add a BR onto here. And so that makes it really um, useful for um, creating something from nothing. So this concludes um, part seven of the organic chemistry tutorial.